amazing. Oh, guys, I am so thrilled. I am absolutely honoured that we have got the one and only Karen Robinson. You will know her as Ronnie from yes. Shit's Creek. We are <laughs> blessed to have you on the Wyburn and Wake show. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. It's like, it's well... It's like coming home, or at least close to home again, even though I haven't I, I haven't lived in the UK since I was two. So, you know. Yeah, well, you're coming to Wales. So. You need to come to Wales. You need to come to Wales. Yeah. I would love to come to Wales. I would love to. Uh, <laughs> well, you're always welcome here. We've got a spare bedroom. <laughs> oh, okay. You're going to be so sorry you said that. I will show up. You have Amazing. no idea. I love it. <laughs> now, we have to start the conversation with a huge congratulations. Yeah. Nine Emmys. I know. I know. Wow. I know. I know. That's what I'm still saying. I was saying to him, uh, oh, uh, I was texting with Sarah Levy the other day because I think that she and I probably, um, our reactions were the ones that people were talking about for for um for a while after and i was saying to her that i still find myself giggling just bursting into giggles or just smiling in the middle of the supermarket aisle for no reason other than i am thinking back to what that night was like yeah my god it was amazing because <laughs> we were <laughs> it and and you were right there behind where they accept the speeches um do the speech Bouncing, you were so happy. Yeah, I know. You know what? I um because it was just us here in Toronto because we had this small gathering. We'd all been um tested for COVID and quarantined yeah. since the testing, so it was, you know, and even so, we we um wore our masks when we could. But because because it was just us, I I I don't think it really registered that people were watching. Yeah. I mean, we had the big screen set up and, you know, we could see what was going on, but it didn't feel like we were at the award show. So I didn't really understand that, you know, there was an international audience seeing how, you know, I really <laughs> react to things in my everyday life. <laughs> 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 I think you guys had the best party too. It looked like you had the Aww. best set up there, definitely. We did, we did. They did a lovely job at this great castle here in Toronto called um oh god, why is it why is it Castle Loma, sorry. Okay. Um and uh you know, and we had a lovely dinner and we'd had some put some drinks away by then and we were just we were relaxed but excited and anticipatory and then that happened. Oh, they incredible. just kept calling our names. I is, love is it. it. Am I right in saying <laughs> the, show. the first time a comedy is won seven out of seven? This is what they tell me. Yeah. And that's... I'm going to believe them. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's the first time I've ever Googled the results for an Emmy Award. Yeah. Because I was so excited. I was rooting for you guys because you've been our pandemic entertainment, so mm. to speak. And I am I, so glad. Oh, uh, you have been an absolute tonic yeah. on UK television throughout it all. We needed light entertainment. We needed to giggle. And you give us just that. Well, um, you have no idea what that means to me because I think, you know, that we, we are all going through something that we couldn't really, you know, have yeah. anticipated, uh, the vast majority of us, and um, what it would do to us to not be able to uh, to be with our loved ones and to um, and to hug people and to shake hands and to have close conversations and to go out for dinner or to the movies or to plays and that sort of thing. No one, no one knew. And, and so to, you know, this was this was timing. Uh, mm. I I really do think that our show is something special, and I knew that from the beginning. But the fact that it was here mm. for people to partake in in this time, I think, is is a real blessing. That's uh, not something that we could have predicted. No. Absolutely, and I, I think as well, like we've spoke about it, and I've seen in other interviews that you know it's been around since two thousand and fifteen. Mm -hmm. It took this time for people to binge watch. Yeah. People yeah. have to do it. And I think it just highlights again that, you know, you've got to stick with the show. And yeah. Netflix, again, have to stick with shows. We've yeah. seen great shows getting cancelled. Yeah. Which could go on to have the success that Shit's Creek has had. Which Absolutely. Is huge. 
because we really were the the little show that could. I mean, we started off with, you know, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, a relatively small budget, the, you know, doing doing our little thing in our little bubble. I think uh, I think one of the things that uh, that distinguished our show was the fact that the creators actually had control of the show to a great yeah. degree. And and this is what happens when you let people who know what they're doing in mm. terms of storytelling um, do their jobs. Just yeah. let them tell the story they want to tell. And um, yeah, it's it. Uh, well, you guys have seen the results now. Yeah. It's, it's just <laughs> incredible, and we've loved it. And just quickly back to the Emmys, um, the Canadian Tower, they lit it up gold for you guys. Yeah, the, yes. Tower, the Canadian National Tower, yes, that they lit it up amazing. gold, and also the big Toronto sign, oh, um, nice. which is another um, uh, big tourist attraction here. Yeah, both of them were lit up in gold. What? <laughs> I can't believe it! Incredible. <laughs> Are you still in that phase? I can't believe yeah. yeah, kinda, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I think I'd probably be more in that phase if I actually had an Emmy to look at, an Emmy to look at because you know I mean none of the Emmys are mine. But um <laughs> I, I I'm still I am so happy for my pals. I really am. I just I I saw how hard everyone worked and how generous and kind and 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 open hearted this show was and you know and to speak to Dan every now and again about what his vision for this show was to see it be embraced internationally the way it has I just I could not be happier for him I really you know so how did you come about getting the part of Ronnie I walked into an audition room how does anybody get any part <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like I it, it's like um I you never know like I yeah. I remember seeing I remember when they sent me the information about the part and seeing the names Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara and going, oh, okay, like I used to watch them on SCTV and, um, and you know, and they're huge. I mean, they're Canadian icons, yeah. if not international icons. And, um, but, but when I see stuff like that, I've learned now, I ha after having been in this business for a while, I have to put that aside and work on the material like I would any other audition. You know, good material. And I could see that it was good material. It was interesting. I didn't have to wear any makeup to the audition, <laughs> which is welcome. I, you know, I didn't really have to have a waistline, which is more than welcome. So, you know, I remember, I think I went in in my gardening clothes. Amazing. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And the, the wonderful thing about Shit's Creek is um, you can never have one particular favourite character. From the start of the shows to the very final, you fall in love and you fall out with some and you fall in <laughs> love and you get, in, you know, you get infuriated with some. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost like a family you get sucked into. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is a family. Well, yeah, and it's a family dynamic that you get sucked into, right? Because we all fall in and out of love with our family members from Absolutely. time to time, right? Um, but I, I can see I can see that happening. And I think that speaks to the the kernel of truth that was at that was at every um, character's core. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. There was something that you could actually relate to. It was human. It was um, it was something that you recognized. I it love that. Brutally yeah. honest at times as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially your character and your relationship with um, Moira, Catherine O'Hara, like you were quite yeah. brutally honest with her. Like, <laughs> it didn't give a crap about anything she wanted. You were like, whatever. And I love that about Ronnie. Somebody needed to tell her what was, going on, <laughs> what was really going on because her whole world, yeah. sometimes, I mean, I, even with the, um, the character of Moira, um, because Catherine O'Hara is uh, is um, so incredible at what she does, even as wild and as offbeat and as inconsistent as that character was, the kernel was there. The mm. kernel of true humanity was there. And um, I think because of that, it was something that Ronnie could poke at. Yeah. Ronnie could, you know, like, over here, reality. Yeah, absolutely. Um, every now and again, I'm, yeah, it, uh, I think that that worked really well. I, 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 <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised 
when, uh, because I don't, I'm not in the writing room, so I don't know what's going to come out in the script. <laughs> but when I saw that Moira and, um, and Ronnie were going to forge some kind of um, link, uh, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's sort of like that push and pull, that sort of friction thing. Um, I, I, I was so happy to see that because, I mean, if I work with somebody like Catherine O'Hara, I can't but learn, right? I can't, it was like being in a master class every single time. Yeah. And yeah. my reactions were real because yeah. she was that funny and, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> wild. She was actually that. You just never knew what was going to come out of her. I mean, you're a legend in your own sense. I mean, yeah. you've won so many awards for stage and oh. I mean, you've done so much work in Canada as well and in the US. But like, do you still get intimidated with people like Catherine and Eugene? Yes, <laughs> yes, but um, but but not so much that it um it, it it doesn't it doesn't shut me down. I hope it I hope it doesn't. I hope it what it does is inspires me to to to, to bring my own game. Yeah. Um, you know, to the fully to the fullest extent that I can. So um, I I I just I feel incredibly lucky and I try to take advantage of these opportunities to, uh, to, to, you know, soak in by osmosis or, you know, or by breaking down what they're doing and trying to understand it or whatever, soak in whatever it is that they're doing that makes them so brilliant. Yeah, yeah it's brilliant they are. It's yeah. incredible. Mm -hmm. We found that an incredibly powerful part of the show um, we saw in an interview that Dan said, Dan Levy said, that homophobia just will not exist in yes. And to approach it from that angle, rather than try and tackle homophobia on the show, it just didn't, it just doesn't exist. And yeah. I found that an incredibly powerful and forefrontal thing. And mm -hmm. just, again, I feel like I'm constantly saying thank you and all this kind of stuff to you, but it's, as members of the LGBT community ourselves, yeah. it's an amazing things to have done. So pass off a thanks on if you can. I well. thought it, I thought it was very interesting as well that um, yeah, um, when the coming out story, it mm -hmm. was the parents were cool. The parents were coming out in a way. <laughs> yeah, but the yeah. parents were like, what's the fuss, you know? And yeah. uh, kind of reversed it a little, and that was about as much fuss on the subject as yeah. there was. No Absolutely. Fuss. Absolutely. Um, I what I also loved about that uh, that storyline was the way David reacted to Patrick not being out to his parents and um, and saying, "You're on your own schedule. You do what you need to do in your own time." Absolutely. That was um, that was a great lesson for for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I think in terms of the uh, in terms of homophobia being non-existent. I saw it as the world as it could be. I think that's one of the one of the things that is that causes Shit's Creek to be such a bomb for people mm -hmm. is that it's it's a world that it, it it feels like it is it's just there. It's yeah. something yeah. that is completely within reach. Um, and I think it was freeing and, um, and it was relaxing for people to just see that it wasn't issue laden with homophobia or racism or, you know, or whatever ism. It, there was none of that. It was just people and their personalities trying yeah. to find a way to fit. I thought it was a, like a perfect example of how things could be yeah. and how things exactly. should be. And, and I thought it should be. Yeah, and I thought it was just lovely to see that without the fuss, you know, and just yeah. love the characters and not get involved yeah. in that nastiness. And it was yeah, just yeah, still there. Yeah, I mean, there's enough done. nastiness without the homophobia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to get somebody going, yeah, you know. I love it. I love it. And um, so comedy is obviously a very difficult thing to get right. Yeah. And your character um, with Ronnie, I mean, we spoke about that sort of yin and yang thing with Moira's character. Uh -huh. uh, did you have any inspirations for making Ronnie like that, or were you instructed to be like that? Or absolutely, my mother. God, <laughs> God, bless her. God bless her. Um, and forgive me if I burst into tears because she she passed away in May. But um, I spent uh, you know a lifetime watching her face, and um, and 
I, I do, I do look a lot like her. Yeah. And she, and, um, yeah, she was, she, she was dry. She was brutally honest. She was wise. Um, she was beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I think that without even, without even summoning her, mm. Um, because all of Shit's Creek I shot while she was alive, so you know, she she was definitely there. But um without even summoning her, um, I was I her she just came through me. She yeah. just you know, yeah. found her way. Amazing. It's, well, it's, it's, it's a good thing to have. It's yeah. my money maker. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, thanks, oh. Mom. <laughs> I bet you I bet she's incredibly proud yeah. of the work you've done too. Uh I yeah, I, I well I think so. Um, my when when the Emmys happened and my sisters were um, were were rejoicing and they said about Mummy that if she had if she were still alive she wouldn't have remembered the name of the show yeah. and she wouldn't have remembered the, she wouldn't even have remembered the name of the of the award and it wasn't because she was mentally um, afflicted in any way it's just because she she wouldn't be able she wouldn't bother yeah <laughs> but she would take all the credit. Yeah, yeah. All the credit, and she would post to everybody. Yeah, I know a mum just like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hope she's not watching. <laughs> she has no idea. She has no idea of the name of our radio show and our no. names are in it. You know, it's that's how it goes. Yeah. As long as you're okay, boy, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you're a success. That's my child, and I'm responsible. I like it. Thank you very much. <laughs> we spoke earlier about, you know, you've been on stage a large part of your career too. Yeah. yeah. And now that we, we've we got this wonderful habit in the UK that once we discover that you are one of ours and you're, <laughs> and you're successful, we claim you back. Yeah. Should I bring out my passport? I think yeah. you should. <laughs> Would it. you like to play in the West End here? Oh, in my, the... oh my God. That is my dream. Are you oh. kidding me? Has it is anyone a ever answered no to that question? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, mean, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of downsides to London City, but I oh. mean, it's a magical place. The West End. Yeah. In a breath, in a breath, I would want to come back and um uh, and um and and work in Britain. I, I there's so much about it. Uh, I as I said, I left when I was two, and I actually didn't end up going back until over thirty years later. I actually worked there. I worked in at the Hackney Empire Theatre doing a show called oh. The Kink in My Hair. I can't know when, when did I do that? I think 2006 is when I did that. Um, and, uh, you know, went back to the house that I used to live in and all of that. And the thing is, you know, you leave when you're two, you don't really have memories that are very sharp, inter pictorial mm -hmm. memories that yeah. are very sharp. But I remember the feeling, my body would go into a boots or something and and um and something about it would just feel so familiar. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a part, and you know, I have, uh, well, I don't know, hundreds of cousins there, and you know, so I, I'd love to come back and work there. You go. If there's anything you guys can do to make that happen, oh, oh well, we'll uh, try. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll write to pay ourselves, and you can okay. get. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Well, London's um, Creek. Yeah. I, I mean, that. speaking of theatres, uh, we watched the documentary on Netflix and it showed the cast doing theatre um, interactions with people. And that looked incredible. And I'm Which sure. Which documentary? Our documentary? Our documentary, yeah. Oh, you mean like when they would have those um when they would have those fan events? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're all on stage. Uh, I would love to attend one of those. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, who would, would you dress like, Moira? Um, <laughs> I don't think there's enough crows in the I UK would. for me. To... <laughs> <laughs> He's got the shoes on now. <laughs> no, oh, not. I think that you guys could bring it, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I could even got pants on because every time I do these skypes, I'm just not even yeah, dressed. Nothing, nothing from the waist down. <laughs> I love <laughs> Skype. <laughs> Oh, those events were um, those events were amazing because there is so much. I mean, you've been in a theater, you know how concentrated that energy can yeah. be, and um, and you know people who are coming to those events are uber fans of the yeah. show. So uh, so that energy. I remember walking out on that stage, 
and feeling 3,000 people hearing them scream and feeling their love. And yeah. it actually knocks you back. Mm -hmm. It yeah. actually just like puts you off balance for a minute. Yeah. It's, it's not something, you know, having done theater for most of my career, it's not something that I've ever experienced before. It's going to be a very strange experience when, you know, bans are lifted and you can come to Europe and then you experience just how much of an impact yeah. the show has had over the year. It yeah. is without a doubt the biggest show so far this year in the UK. I am so happy to hear Absolutely. that. Because even though some of my friends have, um, you know, they, they keep WhatsApping me and telling me, you know, I'm sitting with so-and-so and they really love you and that sort of thing. It, I, it, I didn't know that. I yeah, didn't know that absolutely. it's the biggest thing. I just thought it was my friend's friends who were. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> what, it, what it feels like is kind of like Chinese whispers where you found out, so you told that friend, and then you found out that they told that friend, and then all of a sudden it's been everywhere here. It was word everywhere. of mouth. It was definitely word of mouth. There was no billboards. There was no. no big ads in magazines or commercials. It was word of mouth. Basically, everybody at some point this summer has put up a status Give me some recommendations now to watch. And Shit's Creek was recommended constantly. Yeah. And that's how it's, it's just exploded in the last few months here. And it's massive. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, Over here. That's yes. my good. It really does. <laughs> and without getting too, you know, down with the whole pandemic thing, because um, we're all fed up talking about it. Um, how does it actually make you feel? Um, the way sort of like the theatres have been treated, mm -hmm. almost as though, you know, they're low skilled in many ways, they're saying. And they're just not getting no help, especially here in the UK. It's so frustrating as a performer yourself, I'm sure. You know, besides it being infuriating, I find it really curious because mm. I find that it's really easy to not pay attention to everything that art and artists are responsible for in yeah. everyday life. Mm -hmm. I remember um, uh, a, a director of mine telling me decades ago, and I've, I've never forgotten that he said it, he said that the color of the that shirt that you're wearing, that was chosen by an artist. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, everything that people are watching on TV, mm -hmm. um, walking into a building, if you like the archway or the color yeah. of the paint on the walls or the, 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 the pattern of the carpet or everything, everything. that you see yeah. Yeah. is something that has been curated for your tastes yes. by an artist. Yeah. So the idea that what we do is low skilled is preposterous yeah i just think that people have have just taken it so much for granted yeah. that it's um that they don't feel like it needs their attention anymore and quite frankly i think that if um if it's not going to result in some kind of voting block then the politicians are under no obligation mm. or they they have no reason to uh, to pay it the attention that it deserves yeah but um but obviously i think that it's if a show like shit's creek for instance what we're talking about can, has the power through word and 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 action and message to pull people through a pandemic in the way that you guys are telling me it has yeah. what's low skilled about that the designers or people who put moira's outfits together the people you yeah. know i mean the whole spectrum of moira to to um to ronnie yeah yeah artists yeah. thought of that yeah artists we wrote those words Yes. The music that the jazz gals sing. Yeah. How did they put that together. Patrick simply the best. That is oh, art. Patrick is <laughs> he is a consummate artist. <laughs> it, it, the guitar isn't even his main instrument. His main instrument is a, is a piano, but he was able to do that. Yeah. yeah. That's I'm what good. art does. I heard it was his arrangement too. Yeah. Absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. Jan just gave it to him. Said, you know. Pick me up when you've got something. <laughs> so yeah. good, so good. Oh and my God. And those are reactions that you saw of me and um, Twyla looking at each other. It was the first time we were hearing it. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. was real. 
I love it. And the way some of those characters grew along the journey. Um, yeah. I mean, Alexa, I mean, apart from the Alexis. fact that every time her name was mentioned, Alexis yeah. went off in her room. Alexa would come, come Alexis. on. Oh. I know oh. Alexa's going to come on now. So every time, isn't it? Every time. Yeah. I mean, how she started, I mean, irritating, sister, typical, you know? You're not supposed to like that character, kind no, of. No, we're not. No? I loved her I, so oh, much. Gosh. I mean, no? Was absolutely one of my favorites. Well, oh, yeah. I have a favorite. And Bob, I that agree. Brett the Bob does. Oh, fabulous! I, mean, I, <laughs> I agree. I can't I agree. think. That I think line Bob said, but the minute he'd come on screen, we'd be. It's Bob. It's Bob. <laughs> Bob. The Bob talk. <laughs> yes, yeah. I have no idea what he was doing or what. what no, the no. Out, but I was lost the minute he just comes on screen. Yeah. Just because th that is art. Yeah. <laughs> That is art. That's an artist. That oh. is an artist. And we live with a 70-year-old as well. And our television um, choices are never the same. And she loved Schitt's Creek. And she was excited for Schitt's Creek. And it's the only thing that we, we the three of us have all agreed on ever. Yeah, I think so. Ever. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Pizza, what should I be looking for next? If I, if I, you know, if I'm going to go into a deep hole of um, uh, Brit TV, what should I be looking for? Oh, gosh, I don't think <sighs> that we watch much British TV actually. No, I mean we haven't been. What are you guys watching? Uh, you? We haven't been. We haven't been making things for ages. What's, no. What TV shows are we watching right now? I really um, think we would just watch Ratch, which the, um, is obviously Ratched. Is it Ratched? Okay. Yeah. I haven't started that yet, but it's definitely on the list. Incredible. Ryan Murphy show was a very popular mm. year. Um, oh. watching the Umbrella Academy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we, nothing British. Sorry. Nothing British. Nothing British. <laughs> Sorry, no. We've seen it all. Okay, that's okay. Because you know what? We're still catching up over here. I mean, I, I think I've I've just um uh who Ricky Gervais uh did Afterlife and and um Derek. And uh, those got me through after my mom passed. Afterlife oh, gosh, is gosh. incredible, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it really is. And, you know, I've said this to Nathan before. I've watched Afterlife. He hasn't. I don't particularly like Ricky Gervais, but I love that show. Mm. I absolutely love that show. And again, yeah, yeah. if you've lost anyone, it pulls at every heartstring, doesn't it? Yeah, you know exactly what that is like. You know exactly what that grief is like. Yeah. Again, another very clever show. And do you know, it's funny you should bring that up because that, again, has been a bit of a cult, uh, a favourite. You know, it's not been the big show. That's, it hasn't been the big Hollywood shows that we get mm -hmm. sent. And mm -hmm. a huge, huge reception here in the UK mm -hmm. too. Good. Like. Kernel of Truth. I think people are looking for truth. Yeah. I think there is so much information out there. I think there is so much, well, especially before the um, pandemic hit, there was so much to distract you with brunch and shopping and, you know, and, 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 and everything that you were supposed to have or aspire to or, or try to get. And, um, and I think lockdown put a, put a stop to so much of that yeah and um and i and you know you still have the it, you still have so much information coming in i think people are thirsty for kindness yes uh, and um and realness mm -hmm. and uh, uh yeah and just uh, humanity yes. yeah show and me the, show me somebody show me a heart and let's keep that going. Yeah, I mean, we, Please. Yeah, yeah. We, we've tried to make an effort. Uh, every time a new lockdown has come in, every time new restrictions have come in, we've gone, OK, now we can either join the masses and get work done uh -huh. and enjoy what we can, uh -huh. and shop local and do all those things locally yeah. and do yeah. what we can and enjoy. It. And it's worked for us. Yes. We've yes. stayed up eat and, you know, it's. It's it's worked for us. I hope it could Good. work for us too. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. You you sound like terrific, <laughs> terrific guys. Who I would be friends with. Oh, seriously, we you can come over. I know. I, do you know I get the sneaky feeling you're Welsh? There's a bit of Welsh in you somewhere. It's gonna be. <laughs> I get the sneaky feeling you're Welsh. We need to really? You guys squash. have a lot of Robinsons there. <laughs> in, in the cupboard, yeah. Squash. 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 <laughs> 
juice. <laughs> you should. Amazing. Do you know what would be really interesting for you to do? What? There's a fantastic show in the UK called Who Do You Think You Are? Yeah. And they trace Ooh. they ancestry. trace your ancestry. And uh, they only do it with famous people. So I think you'd be a fantastic candidate I for that show. That. Guys, am I really famous, though? Huge. Yes. Huge. What? Huge. <laughs> okay, should I be acting different? Because I'm still the girl with the bundle no, down no, at my. No, okay, like okay, so I can I can do what I'm doing. Yes. We, we, we have a friend. We have a friend who's a drag queen, and he he was the one who told me about your show, yeah. Doctor Bev, and his name's Rob. And uh -huh. Rob told us about your show, and he he's always got great recommendations. Mm -hmm. And we told him this week. We only told him that we were interviewing you today, and I won't tell you what he said. <laughs> he lost his shit's creek, right? <laughs> he lost his shit's creek. We were not Brilliant. his favorite people. No. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then, you know, as I said, if you guys have any pull at all, because it, it, it wasn't even really on my radar, but, it, but yeah, if you have any pull at all, I, as soon as the borders are open up and it's safe, you come to Wales. Cardiff. Yes, come it. to Cardiff. I'll come Cardiff, I would love to. Oh. Do you know, before we finish, I do have to ask, though, I mean, you've spent all those years with the cast, right? It's clear that you're like a family. I mean, it's, mm. that's the one thing you can't, you can't act. You can see it, okay? Yeah. That final shoot, I mean, what was it like? Oh. Maybe not, maybe not that day, the following day, the week. No, it, it, no, was, it was that day. The following day, we all, you know, we were we were in our our um our individual homes, you know, still bawling. But that final day, um, I think, uh, okay, I can speak about my experience. I kept it together. I kept it. I knew, I knew, I knew that this was the final day, the final scene of the final day of this show that had pretty much taken over my life for six yeah. years. And um and I don't know how I did it, but I but I did. I I kept her zipped up. And the minute they said that's a series wrap, projectiles here. Yeah, oh, I bet. Just oh. and and we were all we were all a mess. We were we were just it and and it was for me, yeah I I I was sad that the show was over, but I understood why it had to end. I, I was sad for my bank account, but I understood that too. <laughs> but, um, but I think mine were actually tears of gratitude. I could not believe that um, that this had happened yeah. to me. You know, I mean, there's so many artists in the world, phenomenally talented people who... Um, work their entire lives giving so much of themselves and you know and who've been inspirations to all of us and this sort of thing happens so seldom and like i said earlier i walked into an audition room and the last six years just bloomed in front of me so i i feel like you know my my parents they they were constantly praying that you know yeah. that this acting thing would work out and that <laughs> i would not end up coming back home to them um and uh you know and i have i have so much i have so much love around me and so many people who buoyed me through to this um to this event and it's it's far from over i mean there's life beyond shit's creek but yeah. um but yeah i was so I was so grateful and I was incredulous in the real sense of the word I that this had happened and I wanted to sit in it and make sure that I recognized what had happened and that I would never ever ever take it for granted. Oh yeah, that's so that's lovely. Amazing. That it's is lovely so lovely. Me. We yeah. need a movie. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> we need a movie. I'm really serious. You were like, okay, yeah, yeah. We need a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I right. think you guys have been so um you've been so vocal about that that yeah. I I don't see I I don't see Dan Levy ignoring you for too long. Yeah. The movie yeah. theaters need a hit. Oh and you God, guys yeah. are a hit. <laughs> it's great. It's great. I love it. It's great. Yeah. Right. Hopefully now Nathan, 
is a very, very talented British artist in his own right, as well as doing these silly things. And um, <laughs> he's come through the ranks. He was on Britain's Got Talent. He's worked his way up. And he does celebrity <laughs> portraits. So I'm going to just sit over you while Nathan does something really special for you. Okay? Yes. OK. So as soon as I knew we were going to interview you today, I had to make a special thank you gift for you. I'm going to sort it out with your people. I'm going to send it over to you. Um, but I make artwork using unconventional materials. And the yeah. thing I wanted to use for you was coffee because it dries very beautifully. And I know I can send it over to you. I use things like pizza and ketchup and everything. But <laughs> oh my it's God. the one I've gone with. And actually, Ronnie's always got a cup of coffee. So yeah, she does. Or a, or a can okay. of beer or a bottle Just of beer. Just a portrait of you, okay? Hopefully the light's not too bright. <gasps> Done. Oh That's my me. god, that is gorgeous! Using coffee. Can I take a picture of that? Yeah, and I'll send it to you as well. <laughs> oh yeah, but no, I, I, I have to, like, this is, I, I can't wait for you to send it to me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that is Amazing. so beautiful. Thank you. And it, it still looks wet, you know, but it's dry. It's completely dry. It's, it's beautiful to use coffee. I love it. Oh, I so truly thrilled. love it. Thank you for capturing me with with with, with such uh, it's such generosity and and I can see the love in that picture. And I love that you used coffee because I mean I enjoy coffee, but also <laughs> um, you know I'm I'm from Jamaica. When I left England, yeah. I um, I moved to Jamaica, so you know coffee is a big thing there too. And I love the color of it and the feeling of it. And it's, yeah. It's Ka gorgeous. Karen, and you must Google Nathan's name to see the people that he's presented work to. And you join, I, I'm saying it because he's my best friend, but you've joined a long line of incredible people from royalty to pop stars. And they're all huge fans of it. It's huge. I will. I, I will Google you. I am so, so <laughs> honored and humbled to to have been to to come out on the other end of your talent and your and your fingers i i well I, I'm a, I'm a lot of your talent with us yes yeah, so we you shared your you. talent with us and seriously thank you so much for taking part in this today it's, it's meant the world to us and all the things we work with the radio the magazine they're all gonna love it yeah i hope, I hope. so, <laughs> I I hope so. so. One last thank thing. you for reaching out one no last thing before you go um yes. There is a movie getting made in the UK and it's called Drag to Church. It's a, an event me, Nathan and a friend of ours set up to save a church from closing. And we put a Christmas drag show on a few years back. And if you don't say hello and wish them luck in this year's, <laughs> they will kill me and Nathan. <laughs> they will. You are like a huge gay icon now in the UK. <laughs> and <laughs> they, we will get away with murder forevermore if we can get a message off you to them, wishing them luck for this year's Drag to Church event. So I am sending a message to whom exactly? Mary Gold, mm -hmm. Joanna Bummy, <laughs> <laughs> Connie just, All. Just the drag queens <laughs> at Drag to Church. Yeah, it goes on and on. Okay, so to, to the drag queens at Drag to Church, is that what it's called? It is. Drag queens at Drag to Church. Hello, thank you for loving the show, and I'm looking forward to seeing your show so I can send some of that love back. <laughs> I love it. Amazing. Oh, thank you. Karen. You've just got yourself a part in the film. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes! Thank you so much for your time. Oh, and it means thank you very Thanks. much, you guys. You guys have made my day. It was wonderful to talk to you. Well, I'm so honored. I am on cloud nine after speaking to Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Karen, so much. Thank you so much. Big love. Big love to you too. <laughs> Take, Take care, care. Karen. Bye. Bye. Bye.